So this is ways of controlling the behaviour of paper and, and also um, a technique of lamination. Um, <clears throat> so the two sets, one which will be tension dried, um, so you should get the, the most extreme expansion um, a minimal contraction. This will be done on a Caribari drying board. These are handmade. Some of you have seen them. Have you worked on carries before? Yeah. yeah. Caribari drying boards, which are traditional Japanese drying boards. But equally, you could use a wooden board that um, you have in your own studio. Um, so, you know, obviously the, the the skills and the techniques are transferable to more simple uh, materials and. You know, simple brushes, obviously these are very expensive and hard to come by, but you know, you could use something similar from an art shop um, in, a, in the same kind of way. So the um, first technique is actually putting it onto a carry barrier board. So we're going to um, expand the paper as, as much as possible by immersing the paper. Um, and the second one, we're going to control the moisture content and use more traditional vertical pressure techniques so it doesn't affect the surface characteristics and expansion as much as um, the first technique. Okay? But you'll be able to observe those uh, nuances and, and different types of changes, both physical and aesthetic. Okay, so. The aims and objectives, um, the overall uh, aims and objectives of the workshop are um, really to expand your diagnostic, analytical and critical evaluation skills appropriate to the measurement of paper with a view to informing fine art practice, a range of skills relevant to the expansivity and contraction of paper and how this may impact on aesthetics and physical behaviour of the paper, techniques related to the manipulation of paper surfaces and you'll be using not only um, wheat starch paste to laminate but you'll also have a chance to try different um, adhesives at different concentrations as a coating and then you can apply these in a, as a coating and then perhaps use sanding or burnishing techniques so you'll have a set of samples this um, or roughly this size Okay, so you'll subdivide uh, one of the sheets of paper and add different adhesives at different concentrations so you can be quite creative and see what the effects are, um, changes in surface texture, gloss, translucency, etc., etc. And all of that is in here. Okay. So it's quite um, wide-ranging and should help you understand paper's behaviour a little bit more and also in relation to the addition of um, some interesting polymers or adhesives which um, might add a creative element to, to the workshop. So the adhesives we're going to be using, um, some of you may have come across them before, but this is, um, this is more expensive than gold. So. Um, use it wisely. Um, this is um, isinglass from the sw swim bladders of the sturgeon fish, which is uh, the best is, is the Kalinsky, which is from Russia. So this is very expensive. We, we're using it because it's, it's rather crude in this form and fishy style as well. But we um, transform it into um, an adhesive like this, which you just melt um, at a low temperature, so you can use it. So that's a gelatin base, but fish based. Can I just say something about this? Because it might be interesting to people. Uh, a few years ago, I was trying to find an adhesive where I could um, bond a very, very thin Japanese paper with a, with a piece of acetate without being able to see the adhesive. And the only only one that actually people in conservation of DNA could come up with was, was this because it's it's transparent and it's incredibly sticky. Yes. And it's reversible, so it's compared with normal gelatin, and it's got the totally different quality because it, it's so strong the glue, and so you can see the translucency is so so good. So if you have very very thin paper and don't want 
discoloration or um, to be able to see the, 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 the adhesive. This is, this is brilliant. And like Jess says, it's very, very expensive, but you, you only need the tiniest. Yeah, tiniest a, a little. To, little. So you, you can use it as an adhesive, but it, it is excellent as a coating. And in fact, a lot of Russian artists um, for, for generations have used that instead of varnish. So you can apply it in higher concentrations in, in order to get that um, change in refraction of, of the paper or pigments that are added to it or media. Um, so that's the, the kind of, um, at the end of the scale, which is co fairly colourless, and not completely, but almost, um, then you have um, slightly more coloured, as you can see increasingly. This is... Um, Prunori, uh, this is a seaweed mucilage um, from a red seaweed that is um, imported from Japan. Again, it's very expensive, but you will see it's a wonderful coating for paper and is traditionally used in Japan uh, for consolidation during um, conservation treatment. But it, it's lovely if you want to detach thin laminates of paper, it um, moulds itself. Um, and it's just a wonderful adhesive mm. to work with, and I, I really like it. So what's its name again? Funori. You, you'll have... It's really you've got, Yes. What I can do, if you wish, um, I can give you spec sheets on all of these mm -hmm. adhesives, yeah. and also suppliers. Um, but, yeah, but you will have Funori, to... Yeah. yeah. Um, so you, you will have to import this. In fact, I've brought this back from Japan myself. But... You know, a little goes a long way, but again, you have to process that um, by steeping it overnight, usually, then uh, bringing it up to blood temperature and then straining it. Mm -hmm. But it does have a distinct colour, but wonderful properties in regards to. How do they age? Do they, um, do they, <coughs> you know, like varnishes tend to yellow, don't they? If yeah. Um, yeah. Degrees? Well, all that's a good question. Um, all um, polymers, all natural polymers, or synthetic polymers, uh, deteriorate from you know word go really. Um, but these are used um, regularly in conservation, so they um, have relatively good aging properties. The best actually is wheat starch, which um, that's, that's the isinglass when it's made up. That's concentrated form, obviously. Um, but the wheat starch, which you'll be using for your adhesive, um, is, is perhaps the best. We're not trialling methyl cellulose, but that is somewhere up there in the gobs in regards to um, age, good ageing properties. It's very similar to, um, well, it's a purified form of um, wallpaper paste. Um, it's in a lot of food as well. Uh, uh, methyl cellulose as a, a bulking or gelling agent, but it makes um, a very clear, completely and utterly transparent um, adhesive. I mean, I can bring some of that out. We can make some up. Um, um, but it's it's not very tenacious in regards to sticking things together. It's fine for very light papers, but not necessarily for heavier weight. And it would be no good for lamination or something like this. So at the end of the spectrum, this is gelatin. So this is a bovine glue um, from hooves and horns. It is a gelatin grade, so it is purified. I mean, we have um, all different species of animal glue from different parts of um, different animals, and they can be almost black. Um, this is traditionally used in bookbinding, you know, for uh, super adhesive, this is. Uh, but you can imagine this would yellow very quickly, and it does. But it's, um, you know, it is used regularly um, in, in conjunction with paper, and traditionally by artists as a sizing agent. Can you use this? Can you use, you used it just for sizing? Uh, Gelatin? Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, dilute forms. Mm -hmm. mm. What, what sort of percentage? I don't know. I just the feel, feel. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, this is a, these are stock solutions. In fact, it's completely because you have to heat this up when it's made. Mm. Oh, you can jump on mm. like a trampoline. Um, but also used for binding pigments. Yes, the it's used traditionally for binding. Yes, yes, Indian miniatures. Um, that's, um, 
and in some Japanese um, pigments as well, yeah, yeah. Uh, ukiyo-e prints, uh, some of the lacquer techniques are with um, animal glue. Um, but from deer, not from mm. pigs and mm. cows, because they just didn't have, have them. It's something the that we can, well, I hope we can look at the students, is, is, is the binding of pigments using some of these. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we could do a whole workshop on adhesives, but this, this, is, this is really to do with surface and, and measurement and how they might affect the, the, the paper surface. So it's not really an adhesives workshop. I mean, we could do two days on that and how you make them up. <clears throat> okay, so that's a bit of context about the materials. Also, I've added in because um, I'm sure most of you use PVA or, or some species of PVA um, but this is um, better grade um, it's um, Plextol it's an EVA so it's, it, PVA is um, awful they, they deteriorate very very quickly but this is a cousin of it um, it's very complex chemistry that's involved but it's a dispersion so you can dilute it with water but um, it does make a very effective coating if you want high gloss um, these are the sorts of materials you probably use also they make very good adhesives for lamination um, but not straight out of the bottle and do they remain water soluble? Or this won't over time. It will change its solubility, what we call solubility parameters, and it shifts, and a more tenacious polar solvents are then needed to remove it. So water might swell it. So if you left it for 20 years, for instance, water may swell the film, and you may get some separation, but um, the older it gets, the more tenacious, and then you'd have to go on to quite, um, you know, tenacious organic solvents, which is more hazardous to health and the, the object. But yes, um, obviously diluted with water to begin with, but then as it ages, it shifts the polarity and becomes a different creature, and you need different solvents then to remove it. But this is quite good, and, and, and certainly over the years, companies, you know, these big um, ICI and various companies um, are improving the formulations so they are um, more age resistant. But um, don't use wood glue under any circumstances for lamination, because you, you, will, you will find that in a few years' time you will get discoloration coming through the support. Um, and you'll be in trouble. Okay, so I think um, I'll start then by um, demonstrating the first technique. <clears throat> Is there any questions so far? If I'm going too fast and you know mumbo jumbo, you know, do do stop me because obviously I'm used to talking to um, conservation studio students. Um, now um, this is. Can I just for a second? <clears throat> oh, that's a failing um, This is set sample set one. Okay. Um, now we've already cut everything um, for you. Now, you, in previous talks, um, and not only me, but um, we've we've spoken about the grain direction. These are cylinder main papers, so they have a distinct grain direction with with the machine. Um, and what we're going to do in order to control the expansion and contraction and behavior of the paper, we're going to have the grain direction for one of the laminates going that way. That's that way. And they've all got a little arrow and pencil in the bottom corner, so you can't go wrong. Um, and then the other one will be cross-grained. So one will be going that way and one will be going that way. <coughs> 